forget what they told you. This is the law of the God who created the heaven and the earth and all that in them is. If anybody tell you different, they're a liar. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Allow me to interject something right here. Verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the Bible says there are other gods aside from the God of the Bible. So for everybody to say that there's only one God is ridiculous. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Then again here in verse 4, this is a commandment. It says, don't make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is, or that is in the water under the earth. But nevertheless, everywhere you look, you see a graven image of the God that you have chosen, that other God that you chosen before the God of the Bible, the one that you call Jesus. You see images of this one all over the place. When you were just commanded not to do this by the God of the creation. Your creator commanded you not to do this. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. Hey y'all, I need y'all to subscribe and smash that like button. And God spake all these words, saying, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. When I post these type of videos, I get very few likes and a low amount of views, and that's because everybody hates God, because you know you don't keep his commandments. So therefore, you don't know God's name. The God of the Bible's name is not Jesus. Any false God that you made for yourself, regardless of name, you're not to bow down yourself to them nor serve them. Then it says, God will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. How do you show God that you hate God? is by not keeping his commandments. Because this is, in chapter 6, he shows mercy to them that love him and keep his commandments. So how can you say that you love God and that God loves you when you show that you hate him? How do you show that you hate him? You don't keep his commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Everybody hates God because you know you don't keep his commandments. So therefore, you don't know God's name. The God of the Bible's name is not Jesus. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Verse 7 only applies to those who consider the God of the Bible their God. And the only way you consider the God of the Bible your God is if you keep his commandments. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. Thanks to Pope Gregory the 13th, nobody can remember the Sabbath day because Pope Gregory introduced the Gregorian calendar, which added days to the calendar, which threw off all of the days after God spoke into existence the Holy Bible. Therefore, nobody knows when the Sabbath day is. So if anybody tells you that this is the Lord's Sabbath day, they're sadly mistaken. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. Hey y'all, I need y'all to subscribe and smash that like button. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let's revisit verse 12 where it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This has a very profound meaning as I have experienced the testimony of a lot of ones 
who failed to honor that father and that mother and realize the condition that they found themselves in in reality because they failed to do so. Whereas it's very important to honor that father and that mother because if you fail to honor your father and your mother, then they're not going to have the patience with you to teach you the things that they need to teach you so that your life can be long upon the land. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Just about everybody's mother or father told them, don't kill, steal, a lie. These are the commandments. Even though they may not have mentioned it that way, they told you these things because these are the values that they try to instill in you to help keep from getting shot in the back by the police for stealing. Keep from ruining your relationship for lying. Keep from getting angry at someone and then kill them. Most people in jail today, in prison today, for murder is because We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. Hey y'all, I need y'all to subscribe and smash that like button. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Let's revisit verse 14 where it says thou shalt not commit adultery. The definition of adultery is voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is not his or her spouse. Most people call this cheating, which by definition, cheating is a completely different thing. But adultery is having sex when you are committed to a person by marriage and that person is not your spouse. The problem is today is that we don't understand what marriage is. We think marriage is going and standing in front of a preacher and making vows and signing a contract. The contract is the marriage license. In a marriage, there are three parties to that marriage, the man, the woman, in the state. And that type of marriage is three parties. The marriage between the man and the woman and God throughout history has never involved a third party or a preacher or anything like that. It's always involved a man making a commitment and a woman making a commitment to the man. And they, in turn, consummate that commitment by having sex. The sexual act is the marriage, not the marriage license. There's nowhere you can read from me in the Bible where any of the people that had several children, like Israel, will complete this discussion in the next parts. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Let's complete verse 14, where it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Israel had 12 children, and he was committed to his wife, and his wife was committed to him. And you see nowhere in those scriptures where they stood in front of a preacher, and he pronounced them man and wife, especially a pronounced the man and wife by the power that was given to them by the state of Arizona, Illinois, or New York, or anything like that. Because what the third party comes in at is that the preacher always says, by the power invested in him by the state of Colorado, for example, I now pronounce you man and wife. The power for him to make them consummate the contract was given to him by the state, not by God. Matter of fact, in the last 30 years, I can't see where God is a functioning factor in any marriage because people have no knowledge of God, no appreciation for God. As a matter of fact, by definition, Christians do not acknowledge the God of the Bible. That's the only God that I talk about is the God of the Bible because that's the only God that I know about. And I know about it through the prophets. These guys that you guys talk about today, y'all made those gods up. The God of the Bible is the true and living God, the one that created the heavens and the earth, that created everything. It's the God of the Bible. These other gods y'all be talking about, I don't know who the hell they are. The ones I didn't read nowhere in the Bible where it says, thou shalt not commit cheating. Let's get real. We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. Thou shalt not steal. You know, the only reason I can come up with why people would change the word adultery for cheat is because they're Gentile and they don't want to acknowledge the God of the Bible. So therefore, they can use a different word whereby the, the word that they're using is not reminiscent of what's written in the Bible. So they don't want to face the fact that they are committing adultery and committing a sin against God the one they pretend to love. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All of this covetedness mentioned from Exodus chapter 20, verse 14 
through 17, all of the hatred that they refer to nowadays where people want something that somebody else has, but they call it hating. Where the term hating come from, I think is because covetedness is showing the lack of love. You don't love what the person has or what they are doing for themselves, and the opposite of love is hate. So that's why they call it hating. We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. Hey y'all, I need y'all to subscribe and smash that like button. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hating instead of covet. Just another word to get away from the acknowledgement of God. Those who refuse to acknowledge the God of the Bible are Gentiles, and Gentiles are Christian, and Christians are pagans and heathen. All of this is by definition. You know, go look it up for yourself. Nevertheless, God calls the end from the beginning, and he makes it come to pass. So all of this stuff was preordained, or God saw it coming, by the ones that don't want to acknowledge him. They want to acknowledge false gods, like Jesus and Zeus, and all kind of Greek gods, and themselves. But what gods do, they call the end from the beginning and make it come to pass. Can't do that, then you're not God. And all the people saw the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they removed, and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. It's the exact same thing today. When God starts speaking, people stand afar off. They don't want to deal with God. They don't want to deal with the voice of God. They don't want to even deal with the words of God. We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. And all the people saw the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed, and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Christians have gotten so far away from God, the God of the Bible, through worshiping their fake God, till they don't even understand what sin is. They think that they can't sin. They say that Jesus did it all for them on the cross. But here, the God of the Bible, the one that changes not, says, the wages of sin is death. Whereby you and your nonsensical beliefs believe that somebody died on the cross for your sins rather than him dying for his own sins. They don't understand that Jesus died for your sins because they the ones that killed him for telling them that they were sinning. Not that Jesus sacrificed himself and he cured your sins. That didn't happen. People have a total misunderstanding about what the Bible is all about. Jesus is the word of God. The word of God died, as you can tell today, because nobody wants to hear the word of God. The word of God died for the people's sins. You get it? The people sinned so much till the word of God was dead to them, which that's the same way it is today. Sin is the transgression of the law. The wages of sin is death. It's all that simple. Hey y'all, I need y'all to subscribe and smash that like button. Right here in verse 19, the people see it to Moses. Moses tell God that he can tell you whatever the message is, and you can tell us, and we will listen. But if God speaks to us, we're going to die because the words of God proves your sin and they will die because the wages of sin is death. Same thing the people are telling their preachers today. They want the preacher to speak to them. When you go to your church and you sit up in there on Sunday, most likely your preacher is going to pull up a fake Bible because if it's anything other than the King James Version of the Bible, it's a fake. All right, then he's probably not going to even read from that Bible. He's going to stand up and start telling you lies. If he's not reading it out of the Bible, most likely he's a lie because he's a false prophet. That's the whole ideology behind a false prophet is that they cannot prophesy unto you what it is that thus said the Lord. Then, since he's not reading from the Bible, he's not giving you the words of God, most likely if he's a New Testament preacher, he's telling you that you don't have to keep that old law. So basically, he's telling you that when you sin, there's no consequence. That's contrary to what the words of God say. The words of God say 
The wages of sin is death. The definition of sin is the transgression of the law. What law? God's law. The law that God set out throughout the Bible. We'll complete this discussion in the next parts. We need to revisit Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 where it says, And God spake all these words, saying, So God spake these words, and he spoke these words to his prophets. And he said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. These Hebrew Israelites that God is speaking to through their prophet is telling them that this God is the one that brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. People, you have to understand that we're currently in Egypt. We're in the house of bondage. If we want to be brought out of the house of bondage as a people, we have to consider, keep, and obey the words of God. It's to let you know that the only way out from under this grievous captivity is through acknowledgement of the God of the Bible. One of the first commandments that God gave you is, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. But nevertheless, you do contrary to the word of God every time you step into one of these Christian churches. Why do you think the Christians use the death symbol as their logo? Yeah, that cross is a death symbol. That's because Christianity is going to get you killed.